What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. So we've got good news guys, Battlefield 2042 is going to receive some more future updates. And that's something that DICE said in their latest dev note, which is for update 7.3. We know for a fact that update 7.3 is not going to be the last update and some more new updates are coming our way with some more balancing to take care of. However, today we're taking a look at update 7.3. We've got some balancing changes to some weapons and some specialists as well as well as some vehicles. Uh, we've got the x Draugr getting balanced. We've got McKay's grappling hook, just nerfed to hell this time, let's say. We've got the PBX nerf. We even got the Master Key nerf, so it's gonna be a big nerfing show. But before we start, if you enjoy the content, if you find it helpful, do make sure to give it a like so you can trick the algorithm to actually think it's a good video. And if you watch the content regularly, just go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on future videos. With all that said, let's get started. So update 7.3 goes live on June 11th. It will include a few balance changes and bug fixes that we're gonna go over one by one. So for vehicles, we've got some interesting changes to the x Fat Draugr first. The x Fat Draugr's AP cannon damage versus other air vehicles is now increased by 20%, and the DRFM jammer will now protect against all locks for 5 seconds. Now the developer comment is interesting about this. We've seen your feedback around weapon lock-ons against the x Fat 4 Draugr and how little counterplay exists around it. We are therefore adding a lock-on protection to the DRFM jammer, that will protect the Draugr against all lock-ons for 5 seconds. This will not protect the vehicle against projectiles already fired, but should offer options to avoid getting locked on. I've been playing the AA missile for a while now, and the x Fat Draugr is just completely defenseless against it. Completely defenseless. And that was something good for me because, you know, that was just free beat for me, shooting that x Fat Draugr twice and it was done for. But now the jammer somehow works as an anti-lock-on device as well and won't let you lock onto it for five seconds. Still, that's not as effective as, let's say, flares, but it's just better than nothing. So we've got some changes to RAM as well. The fire rate of the 40 millimeter cannon was increased from 140 to 155, and the blast was also increased from 35 to 37. The Hoodzer impact damage was increased from 40 to 65 to make it more desirable in vehicle combat. The developer comments on this goes like this. The missile launcher has been dominating the loadout for the EBLC RAM. These changes are aiming to make the 40mm and Hoitzer cannon more competitive options when choosing your loadout. So this part of the patch note is also interesting. It's a similar fixes for other vehicles are planned for the next update. So at least we have one more update, but I guess there's just more than one because this game will definitely need more balancing changes as we progress towards 2025 and the new Battlefield game. So for weapons, we have the DFR Strife first. The armor piercing damage uh, was lowered from 23 to 21 in 0 to 100 meters. And we've also got Master Key here. Maximum pellet dispersion increased from 2 to 2.5 degrees. RPM reduced from 99 to 80. So now we've got the fire rate decrease as well. Damage per pellet reduced as follows. From 5 to 10 meters, reduced damage from 20 to 18. And from 10 to 15 meters, reduced damage from 18 to 16. So we also have the damage reduced. So we've got dispersion increased. We've got fire rate decreased and damage decreased as well. That's definitely a big nerf for Master Key users. I'm not a big fan if I want to be honest, but it really is a dominant underbarrel shotgun, to say the least. The developer comment on this is interesting. These changes aim to balance this attachment and reduce its power against short-range primary weapons, while remaining a viable option to add strong CQC capabilities to weapons that otherwise wouldn't have them. Now for PBX, we're gonna get some nerfs on the close combat ammo. Before update 7.3, from 0 to 20 meters, it would do 28 damage, but with update 7.3, from 0 to 10 meters, it will do 28 damage. And from 10 to 20 meters, it will do 24 damage. The dispersion has also been tweaked. Dispersion will increase slightly faster after the first few shots, but maximum dispersion levels remain the same. So that slight increase is like 8%, okay? Bursting and tap firing should yield similar performance as before. So we've got changes to high power ammo as well. Before update 7.3, from 0 to 10 meters, it would do 28 damage. But with update 7.3 from 0 to 20 meters, it does 28 damage. So that's a buff to high power ammunition. The reload speed penalty of high power ammo has also been reduced. So the developer comment on this goes like this. These changes aim to address the overuse and overperformance of the PBX-45 close combat ammo setup. 
which had a notably superior TTK within 20 meters with no equivalent downsides. TTK with close combat will still be the overall fastest of all ammo types within 40 meters, but will require more control at longer distances to stay as accurate as before. High power ammo will now have more competitive TTK within 20 meters and reload speed to make it a more viable mid-range ammo type option. And yeah, that's about PBX. I guess we can all agree on that the PBX is one of the best SMGs in the game. The close combat ammo was also pretty decent on this weapon. I do believe everybody uses that. But I don't think update 7.3 will make people regret using the close combat ammunition. I mean, people will still love it because it's going to give them more fire rate and it's going to give them more CQC capabilities. So why not using it? Like those damage numbers are not going to mean anything in my opinion. Again, we're about to see that tomorrow. So there's no rush, guys. We'll see how it works. And finally, for characters and gadgets, McKay now uses a reload animation every time the grappling hook is equipped. So you can't just equip your grappling hook and instantly fly off. You have to wait for it. For some reason, you have to reload it every single time that you equip it. I don't think this is an interesting change at all. It takes away some of the core elements of McKay, but it is what it is. I do believe DICE will do what they think is right, and there's no stopping them from doing that, but that's just ridiculous. Why should you reload something that you've just equipped? That's not cool, is it? But yeah, that's some bad news for McKay users. And we're going to see some less McKay's flying over instantly. At least that would not happen in an instant. So that's about it, guys. We've gone through everything that the patch note had to offer. I'm going to put the link to that patch note down in the description. If you want to read it for yourself with all the details, you can feel free to do that. The link is down there so you can go and take a look yourself. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great day. And until next time, guys, stay cool.